Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, we're, al we're already starting? There's no intro? OMG, I am completely unprepared. Oh my god, I, I feel like I just showed up in the bedroom without a condom. This is this is quite awkward. Um, well, I guess we're going, guys. It's effort versus Jangby. Let's. We're just going right in. We're just going right in. There's no intro. There's no introductory spiel. This is it. Effort. Red Zerg, top left. Jangby, purple Protoss, bottom right. Yes. Holy! What? Wait. Did you, did you guys just see that? Who was that guy? Was that effort? Wait. What? <laughs> what just? I don't, hold on, can I like rewind the VOD? Does anybody mind that? Okay. All right. Effort's blonde now. That's nice. Oh, we have white guys. They are CJ Antis fans. That guy was wearing a sock on his head. Was that was that SNM? SNM was that your friend? Did you like? Did you uh? Did you sell him a sock or something? I don't know. SNM likes wearing socks on his head as well. In case anybody doesn't know. Anyways, we have an Overlord scouting in the vertical direction. It looks like he's gonna be an overpool from effort. Uh, we are on ground zero, by the way. Uh, in cross map positions, and uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, due to IEG issues, I am now using VODs from the official Esports TV channel, which for some reason are in the wrong aspect ratio, that's why everything looks wide and fat. Um, yeah, Brood War didn't just suddenly get obese, it's it's just in the wrong aspect ratio. Uh, it's in 16-9 rather than 4-3. I don't know why. Uh, I was actually considering trying to like fix it myself on the stream, so just like flat, like kind of compress it horizontally for you guys. But I thought that might just make things look really, really weird. So I thought better not. I'll just uh, I'll just give the vods to you as I as I see them. So anyway, it looks like Jangby's doing a one base build. That's very interesting. Uh, not going for the standard forge, forge fast expand. I don't know if that's because of the map or or what. And he's actually two gating, 10, 12 gate in the main. Wow. I have not seen that in PvZ in a long time. Uh, not at the pro level, at least. Huh? This is this is like this is like pre this is like before Bisu showed Protosses how to PvZ. This is what Protosses were doing. It's like you know before the Forge Fast Expand was invented, 1012 Gate was like the the build or one of one of the common builds. But uh, well, I guess I guess Jangby's going old school here. I don't I don't really know how much I like this. Um, I guess I guess let's see how Effort reacts now. Effort is actually just judging from the minimap. Hey, pretty girl. Wait a minute. Is that like a K-pop group? They're all wearing like similar looking costumes. Because I know I know this match is actually being uh, broadcasted at WCG. Uh, today and tomorrow's matches are both being broadcasted at WCG. I, I, that must be the must, must, must be a random K-pop group. I'm sure SNM can tell me which one exactly it is. It looks like a, a Ling's gonna see the first Zealot here. So now now Effort knows that it's a it's a one base build. There's no way a Zealot would be that fast off of Forge Fast Expand. And uh, as, I, as I was trying to say before, they uh, switched to some pretty ladies. Uh, there is actually a hatchery at the bottom left natural. Effort actually just assumed his opponent was going for a Forge Fast Expand and took a quick third base uh, at the bottom left. Now that's actually gonna become quite a liability against this uh, against this two gate. In theory, I don't think he'll be able to defend all these bases. Uh, usually when you face a one base build, you're supposed to build the third hatchery uh, in your natural to help block zealots or, or even in your main is fine. But you don't wanna you don't wanna do this, you know, the, the usual taking it at a third base. Because that's what you do when they put when you, when the Protoss is forge fast expanding. And yeah, look, a lot of zealots are actually coming in here. Uh, effort could be in a bit of trouble. Uh, looks like though he does have. Oh, he has a nice lot. Uh, ten. Looks like ten, twelve zerglings coming out and getting a decent surround on the zealots. Very, very nice by effort. And Jangby is now running away. I. Oh man, I I didn't quite. Uh, I didn't quite see what happened there. I think I wonder if it would be better if he tried to if Jangby tried to run behind the minerals and just uh, kind of hide in a little in a, a little gap there. But this two gate's not working at all. And looks like uh, Jangby does check the nine o'clock. Uh, base for a hatchery. He doesn't see one there, and it looks like his zealots are actually just going home. One zealot in the main base doesn't even get a single drone kill. That was that was not 
very successful at all. Meanwhile, looks like Jangby is just going to do a tech follow-up. Uh, another, you know, I mean, another thing he could have done is actually build both gateways at his natural to do a kind of a wall-in. I don't know if that's actually possible on this map, but on certain maps, uh, for example, um, Longinus, say, you can actually uh, do a very nice wall-in with both gateways at the front of your natural. And then, ev and then, so if your zealot pressure doesn't work, you can actually just get a forge and then expand quite safely behind the wall. Uh, you just block it up with zealots and build like a single cannon behind, and you're absolutely fine. Anyway, it looks like uh, Effort's following up with uh, a relatively quick hydrogen, and that is uh, that is correct. Um, seeing as Jagby is still on one base, going for the tech, uh, and looks like Effort's being very aggressive with these things. I don't think that's a good idea. That's a lot of zealots on the ramp, like. Does he really think he's going to break that? Meanwhile, the two Dragoons are out. They're going to take down this Overlord that was scouting in the base. And looks like uh, Jangbi is... Okay, he's got a Stargate up. He's getting something at the Cybernetics core. I don't actually know if that's uh, Dragoon range or plus one. It could actually be Dragoon range. He could actually be using some kind of crazy one base range goon thing. This is this is actually a really peculiar, peculiar build from, from Jangbi here. I'm afraid I don't have anything <laughs> too insightful to say about it. Uh, I, I'm just, just going to wait and see what exactly the upgrade is. Uh, the upgrade will actually tell us quite a bit if it's Goon Ranger or plus one. Man, I hope he gets a scout. That'd be awesome. Go scout Goon. That's like my favorite build. Anyway, oh, looks like Effort actually manages to sneak two lanes into the main. That's going to give him a complete scout. Uh, of course, up until now, he hasn't seen... Actually, I don't, I don't know if the Overlord just now saw the Stargate being made uh, before it got chased out by the Dragoons, but uh, even if it didn't, uh, Effort now knows exactly what's going on in the Protoss base, and crucially, he's seen that the Cybernetics core is spinning. Now, uh, the, the most common one-gate tech build in PvZ is to go for Sair DT. So you get one Corsair and you make a DT and you get a Forge and you expand. Uh, and then you use your Corsair to kill the nearby Overlords and then your DT makes it safe. And this is kind of like a... I, I don't know, it, it looked an, a little bit like a delayed version of that, going for the 2-gate first and then getting the Corsair out, but he's also getting... something. I, I guess that is... if he's continuing Corsair production, I guess that would be plus one air weapons? And it does look like he's expanding. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, this was this was kind of strange. 10-12 gate into Stargate, into Expand. Seems very, very suboptimal, in my opinion. Uh, one possibility is that Jangbi was hoping to do a lot more damage with the Zealots, in which case his follow-up might have been different. But perhaps just because he didn't really do too much damage, uh, you know, he's doing this weird follow-up. And, oh, it looks like it actually was Dragoon range. Never mind. He's actually... Pumping a lot more, uh, lot more dragoons here, and the cybernetic score has already stopped uh, spinning. If that was plus one, it wouldn't have finished so quickly. So he actually has gone for dragoon range. Meanwhile, efforts uh, just making some hydras. He's getting his lair now. And I mean, he's. I think he's miles ahead because uh, against against a 10-12 getting player to have gotten the third base up safely like that. Should put him in a, in a pretty nice position. Meanwhile, it looks like he's just going to ignore those Corsairs at the front. He's just going to go for a counterattack here, but those Zealots and Goons should be enough. And I don't know if this is the correct decision from Everett, actually. This is going to supply block him once he loses that Overlord. He's actually already supply blocked 43 of 43. And that Overlord's going to go down as well. So now he's at, looks like, something like uh, 40... Wait, he's actually at something at 45 out of 43. I don't know how he got that extra supply. So, I mean, Jangby doing a good job with these Corsairs, but, uh... I just, I just really don't understand his opening build. I just... huh. I mean, the 10-12 gate, I understand. Uh, it's kind of not the best build, especially cross-map PvZ. Uh, nobody really uses that anymore. Interestingly, uh, Noni, uh, or Liquid Tyler, as USC2 players would, would know him, uh, used to do a very, very good 10-12 gate into expansion uh, in PBZ. Day9 actually talks about that a lot. Um, but that was that a long, long time ago. Anyway, it looks like we do have a Spire uh, being produced. And what is going on in the main? Looks like uh, just taking up to Templar as normal, getting a couple of extra gateways. So that's actually very, uh, a very interesting strategy, strategy from Jangbi. Rather than using the Corsair and a fast uh, DT to defend his expansion, he instead uh, gets goon range and gets a bunch of goons and I wonder I mean that that could that could be uh you know more efficient since he already has the two gateways rather than just like having if he'd gone for one gate tech he wouldn't be able to pump enough dragoons just from the one gateway to make it 
to, to make an ad adequate defense, but uh, since he already had the two gateways and he's pumping Master Goons, it looks like it's okay, but he's got to be careful. It looks like he will win this engagement, but you have to. But the thing to note is that cost, uh, you know, on, in terms of it, if you have equal cost, Hydras uh, versus Dragoons, the Hydras will uh, win that. The Hydras are more cost effective compared to the Goons. Uh, in that engagement, it was actually the Zealots tanking a lot of the hits uh, that, that I think allowed him to win that. Because interestingly, um, just due to damage types, Zealots actually take reduced damage from Hydralisks. Hydralisks uh, do explosive damage, and Zealots, I believe, are small unit types, meaning they take uh, only half damage from a Hydralisk shot against their armor. Uh, shields do take uh, do take full full damage. Um, that would be the equivalent of um, bonus damage in SE2, like plus something versus armored and whatnot. Uh, instead, we have unit sizes and uh, and damage types. Brutor. Anyway, uh, Jangmi's just gonna poke a little bit here, but he can't actually attack against these observ or against the lurkers rather, because he has no observers. Uh, but he can actually range that hatchery, it seems. So he's just gonna do that. And oh, look at this! When did he actually get that probe there? I have no idea how Jangbi or when Jangbi snuck that probe in. I assume that probe got there a long time ago or something. Somehow there's a probe in the bottom left main. He's actually going to build a, a proxy gateway, I would imagine, there. Pro probably just to pump some DTs. Uh, wow, and yep, there it is. There's the proxy gateway. So probably just going to make one gateway there and, and pump some Dark Templars and do some harassment. Man. <laughs> I actually love doing that. I do that so much in like ladder games. It's just such a troll strategy. Because uh, cause DTs, man, when they're attacking drones, you don't get a warning as a Zerg. If a unit dies in one hit in Brood War, there is no warning sound. Uh, there's no sa uh, audio alert, and there's no ping on the minimap to, to let you know that your unit's under attack. So it's very easy to lose like an entire mineral line to a DT without uh, actually noticing. Anyway, Jangmi is going to have to back up now, and I hope he's got some High Templars out, because... Uh, ranged goons, while they can be good in the early and mid game, you, uh, you know, once you're once they get into once the, a decent number of hydras get out, you need to have the the psionic storm support. Although interestingly, uh, that high goon count is going to do quite nicely against these lurkers, and it looks like the zelts are going out. Some zelts running around the side. There are hydras and and a sunken there to help defend. And where's the storm? Oh my god, does Jangmi not have storm yet? He needs storm to defend this. He's only got one cannon. All the dragoons are going down. There's so many hydralisks for effort. He's got two high templar there, but either they don't have energy or storm research is not complete. I don't know which one it is, but he's going to lose them. And Jangmi GG's effort with a perfect timing there, right before Jangmi had storm. Breaking down the natural, and Jangbi gets taken down. Wow, looking very upset there. Effort, even though he has possibly the worst hair sense I've ever seen. Even doing a little bit, little ceremony there. I just, I mean, he defended the he defended the two gate perfectly, and then he followed up with hydras, and it was it was good. It was good. So that means effort is now 3-0 in pro league. Uh, despite quote unquote being retired for like a year, which is pretty scary. Anyway, I'm gonna play a commercial and then we're gonna move on.